today's lecture. Um, today I'm going to give you a construction overview of the um, residential construction as well as just the kind of reasoning as to why um, drafting is important. Um, before I go into this, uh, again we will build on this throughout the entirety of this semester. So hopefully by the end of it you'll understand all the components to a house, how they come together and how to um, draft and model most of it. Okay, um, just the other thing I forgot to mention last week is we're not going to have any calculations um, in our uh, unit, um, but there will be design aspects. So, uh, before I get started on that, just want to come here to our um, learn page. Uh, in our read and interpret construction documents, you do have two examples in here you can look through. These are just um, some lectures, like lecture slides. Um, and in the extra resources, you have just some extra things in here that you can have a look at if you would like to. Okay, that's just documents like this showing your floor plan um, come through, footing layouts and elevations and cross sections and all kinds of different things, which we'll, we'll get to throughout the semester. Um, this is uh, just some extra drawings if you want to go through it. Um, it will go through and show you, you know, just follow these steps. Um, and again, back onto floor plans and elevations. All right, so let's come to this one. And hopefully this is going to work for me. <clears throat> awesome. So, looking at our housing system, our houses are made up of uh, different components. So usually what will happen is we'll get uh, a flat block and we start building on it. All right, that's really what's happening. So the first part of the house is the foundations, which is below the ground, which includes the footings. So that's what holds our building to the earth. Our footings, um, we'll do some design for footings um, and you'll learn that more in your geotechnical subject. Um, the walls, obviously the carpenters will come in and put the walls up. Um, so these are timber framed or steel construction and obviously you've got your roof to encase the house. Now our footings and slab. So typically our slab is between 100, <coughs> sorry, up between 100 and 125 millimeters thick. Um, typically we'll go with 100 millimeters. The only reason we really go to 125 is if we have a slab thickening because we have a load bearing wall um, or as we'll, we'll find out down the track and you'll learn more in your geotechnical subject as well. When you've got a footing um, report, you get this soil log and if we have more than 200 millimeters of backfill in that log, we have to increase the um, thickness of our slab. So our footing sizes are very dependent on the soil. It depends on how much the soil shrinks and swells due to their clay content. Um, obviously it's designed by an engineer, so not anybody can design it. Um, and the footings just prevent our house from moving and cracking. So our stud walls is what's inside of our house. Um, so it's a, it's a vertical framing member, and this just makes the skeleton of the house. Um, it's 90 by 45 stud, um, and these are spaced at 600 centers in our house. Um, so if you look at a cross section of the wall here, these studs here are spaced a maximum of 600 centers. Um, in our wet areas, they'll go to 450. All right, but we'll keep revisiting this. Um, with them, you've got a bottom plate and a top plate. All right, um, I'll explain this more when we look at our actual house and our um, layouts, what part is what. Now, our external walls, we're going to be looking at brick veneer. You can get hebel, you can get panels, you can get all kinds of different um, external clad frames. Um, but for us, we're going to be looking at our brick veneer. So this outside wall is 240 millimeters thick. It comprises of a 90 by 45 millimeter stud, which is this stud here. We have this thermal gap here, which is basically just a pocket of air. There's nothing there. Um, there will be tires back, but we'll look at that later. Um, this distance here is um, between 40 to 50 millimeters. And then we've got our brick course on the outside, which is um, 110 millimeter brick. So all, all together, this 240 is from the outside of this brick to the inside of this stud. Um, and the uh, stud here is load bearing from the roof. So all the weight of the roof gets loaded to these outside studs. Um, this black um, sheet here is called sarking. All right, that's just for waterproofing. Our rafters, uh, these little bits of timber or wood here, 
Okay, they run, they run at 90 degrees from the ridge beam, which is his top beam here. Um, they space between 600 to 900 centers. Um, the spacing will change depending where the house is located, which is highly dependent on the wind. Um, but you'll cover um, all of that kind of design um, later throughout your course. Um, and usually these are 200 by 45 uh, millimeters, so it's 240 um, deep and 45 millimeters wide. Um, and it's MGP10, it's the same, um, which is uh, MGP10 stands for machine graded pine and 10 is just the structural grade, which we'll cover um, when we look at our roofs. Uh, you can use trusses. So our trusses can either be timber or light gauge steel, um, depending on what you're doing or what kind of house you want. Um, obviously, uh, most of you should have heard of like, you know, companies like Superlock, um, which is the light gauge steel um, framing for residential construction. So these uh, trusses can be made either on site from a carpenter or can be prefabricated in a warehouse and then they just get transported in the back of a truck <clears throat> and then craned uh, on top of the uh, the studs on the outside. Um, trusses are good, they allow us to get larger spans in our building um, and usually these can be spaced up to 1200 millimeters um, or 1.2 meter um, center spacings um, depending on what the manufacturer tells us. Um, we usually got two different types of trusses, either a floor truss or a roof truss. So a floor truss is for two-story, and obviously the roof truss is for the roof. Um, now just going to more of an overview of what we're going to be looking at, um, and just different kind of uh, things that we'll be doing in drafting. We've got concrete beams and columns. Okay, so these made up is called a composite material. So a composite material is just two types of material coming together. All right, so we've got steel and we've got concrete. Okay, so we've got two types of material acting together. So these ligatures are these little circle things running on the outside and these steel rods or the bars are these little long ones here. Okay, I'll show you these in class, um, what they look like um, and quite often we do use these. You look at any kind of concrete um, construction and these are used. All right. um, obviously designed by an engineer. Um, we won't be designing them um, but I will go through some concepts in concrete um, just to give you a good foundation for the next two years. Steel plates, we'll be doing um, not steel design, but we will be drawing steel elements um, on CAD. Um, so steel plates are used everywhere. Everywhere you look. Look around Tonsley when we're there, I'll point some out to you. There's steel everywhere we look. So these steel plates are quite often used to connect columns to beams, beams to beams. Um, so here's obviously a steel beam, here's a steel column, here's a plate. So they'll weld the plate here and they'll put some bolts through it. Um, here's a base plate. So we've got a base plate sitting here. We weld this column to the plate and then we bolt it down to this piece of concrete. Um, again, designed by an engineer. Um, we will be drawing quite a few of these. But when we hit the steel section of it, it will become more clear. So in here are just some things for our housing. So our doors, we have 920 external doors, 820 internal doors, 720 for our wet areas, which is our bathroom and laundry doors. Um, we're gonna be using a fair bit of this annotation here. So our aluminium sliding door is an ASD 2124. Okay, so 21 is the height, so it's 2.1 meters, and it's 2.4 meters wide. Okay, cavity sliding door, is CSD. All right, um, we're going to be going through all of the annotations that we use for drafting, um, so you're able to read off the plans. The head height is a 2.1 meter standard. The head height is the top of the door frame. All right. Um, garage doors. These are just typical um, uh, measurements. So again, 2.1 meter high and 2.4 meter wide for a single garage for a car to fit through it, and it just about doubles obviously for a double garage. These can go up to 2.4 meters if you want to be a bit more um, luxurious. Our windows. <clears throat> so aluminium sliding window, it should be sliding, not slide, is ASW. We have fixed windows, so AFW, aluminium fixed window, awning, AAW. Okay, we will go through this. Um, I'll show you the steg bar um, and the trend 
uh, brochures and that will show you where and how all these look. So our windows, when we design for a house, have to be a minimum of 10% of the floor area. Okay, so if my room is five meters by two meters, so 10 square meters, I have to have at least one meter of window, okay, to allow uh, natural light to come in. Now, these measurements are obviously very funny, as we've probably just noticed from the door, is for windows and doors, it's the height by the width. Don't ask me why, I have no idea why, it's just how the manufacturers do it. So that means this one here, 1210, is 12 is 1 1.2 meters or 1200, and 10 is a meter wide. Okay, so 1200 high, 900 wide. Okay, and then that's a very narrow, that should be the other way around, that should be 10, but nonetheless. And again, the head height is all the same, 2100 is standard. These are going to be some properties that we go through in CAD in my next video. Okay, so we use these things called layers um, and layer properties. And what this does is basically we isolate things on different layers um, to work out what they are. So we'll put the external wall, the doors, the windows, all the different things. What's different in our drawing will go on different layers, which you'll see when we do it. Um, it allows us to lock layers and have full control of our drawings. And you need to be able to do this because you won't be the only one working on your file. You will send it off to somebody else and they have to know what's going on. So we will cover this um, in my next video for our next step in CAD. Our measurements and annotations. Okay, obviously we have to measure everything we do. Our drawings have to be foolproof. All right, we have very different skilled trades that we're going to be dealing with. And we need to communicate effectively everything that we want. At the end of the day, we're the designers. We have to communicate what we want to somebody else. All right. So everything we draw will be dimensioned. And obviously, all of our drawings have to be to scale. Okay. It's a must. Everything has to be accurate that we draw. Just some examples of some annotations and measurements. All right. So this is a steel plate or a base plate. Um, 150 by 150 millimeters. We worry about this center to center, oh, sorry, this center to edge spacing for um, steel. All right, um, I'll explain why um, down the track. Um, we have obviously the diameter of the hole. I'll also explain how we work out this diameter um, and the purpose of it. And we've also got here just a measurement from the edge of that hole to the edge of the plate. Okay, very important for steel. This here is a doubly reinforced concrete beam. Okay, again, all the measurements, so 350 by 550. This measurement here is the most crucial one. Okay, this is what we need for our design of the concrete beam. And obviously our cover and the ligature that runs around. Okay, so this here, all right, this concrete beam is effectively looking at this from the face, okay? Um, I will show you that in class. Um, just a, a floor plan, um, fully dimensioned. All right, this is how it looks. Professional, um, good for construction. We can send this off to our timber suppliers, to our trades to start costing or even start building with. So we know the thickness of our walls here. All right, these internal walls, this is a different type of construction. Um, so these thick thicknesses here are going to be slightly different to what we're dealing with. But I know this room here is 3.466 meters, uh, meters, okay, or 3,466 millimeters wide. Okay, I can come to another end and work out the um, width of it. All right, so everything we do has to be annotated. Um, an issue here, obviously a bit more complicated with a different type of wall construction. Generally, we try to round all of our measurements if we can. If we've got the freedom to do it, it's best practice too. Okay, if we rock in with this for our trades, so I want this room here to be 3.513 meters, exactly from wall to wall, they're gonna have, they're, they're really not gonna be happy with you. Okay, so this here would be better to have it 3.5 meters. So you round it down, round it to the nearest 50 or 100 if you can. Uh, typical footing cross section, 
Okay, this is going to be important. You'll need to know how to read one of these for your exam. Um, but we will go through drawing this. Okay, this has all the details that we need. So I know that these footings are 300 wide, 750 from the top to the bottom. I know the mesh, the Forticon, and blinding sand, and everything else in here. We will go through this in detail when we come to our footings. But I just want to give everybody an overview as to where this course is leading. Okay, that's my presentation done for today. Um, I will hit you all up in the next video, and we will get back into our CAD drawings. Thank you.